see on ultra-processed foods could be as dangerous as being hooked on uh, alcohol, tobacco and even cocaine. Nutritionist Rob Hobson is joining us with his reaction to that shocking headline and to reveal his top tips for breaking free from junk food for good. Rob, what's your take on the food addiction? Yeah, so this headline is really interesting. It came from the fact that we, um, the experts have gone over to a conference to really look at, to try and get it um, approved as a proper condition. So food addiction, it's not really considered by many to be uh, really sort of affiliated as a proper condition. And a lot of the foods that people are addicted to are ultra-processed foods. So the top five are pizza, crisps, biscuits, chocolate and ice cream. So... These foods are very overly processed. The way they're engineered, uh, the, the way that the nutrients behave together in your body makes them really difficult to eat. Now, it doesn't mean that if you have a chocolate bar, you're going to get addicted. It's just certain people who have a tendency to be more addicted to foods could fall into that trap. You know, when they eat these foods, they have a, a certain combination of fats and sugars that, that trigger the release of dopamine in your brain. So that becomes quite addictive the more you do so, it. So, I mean, I, I'm, call, I'm calling this drug food as far as I'm concerned. Why, is it, why do you think it's not recognised as, as, as a drug food? I think that people are beginning to, and I think that the problem is, you know, comparing uh, a chocolate bar to, to certain drugs, some people might see as a bit extreme, because it doesn't affect everybody in that way, but for some people who are predisposed to this, then, then yeah, eating too many of those foods, yeah. and in the UK, up to 80% in some cases, they can become addictive, and that leads to all sorts of problems, not just to do with your health, your mental health, your physical health, the effect it has on the NHS, the amount of money it costs to, to treat all of this. And obviously, if that condition is recognised, people can then get help more easily as well. well Rob, it's interesting so... what, what you said, that the combination of things, because my initial thought was, oh, what is it you're getting addicted to? Is it sugar? Is it caffeine? Yeah. But you said it's, it's, it's like a, a little kind of alchemy of all those things put together, isn't Yeah, it? you've got to look at the food of, as a whole. I think this is one of the things that's come out of this whole UPF thing, is what exactly is it that's causing the problem? And I think it's the food as a whole, as a food matrix. We're going to look at some sweeter foods. Now, they can go through the body, they're, they're absorbed very quickly, they're digested very quickly, they can bypass your signals saying that you're hungry, so you can eat more of them much more quickly, they can affect your blood sugar levels. So it's really the food as a whole... There might be some research around certain additives, emulsifiers, artificial sweeteners, may be impacting on the gut microbiome, but that mm. research is in its early stages. We're talking about the whole matrix of the food. Yes. So what easy swaps can we make then? OK, so we're going to start with some breakfast cereals. Love it. Right, so, you know, some cereals are very sugary. We've got some Shreddies here versus Weetabix. The, the Shreddies are not particularly sugary, but they do contain more sugar than a Weetabix. Um, they're a good source of fibre, so what you get with some breakfast cereals is, and, and UPS in general, they're quite low in fibre, and that's the nutrients that's really missing in a lot of people's diet, and that's what slows down the release of sugar into your diet. Rob, is your whole thing... Like, if it's ultra-processed, it's, it's got more than five ingredients? Or yeah, is that so right? well, maybe even more. So to, to, to find an ultra-processed food, lots of ingredients on the back, a lot of ingredients you won't recognise, a lot of additives, those kind of things. Um, you'll find they're quite low in fibre, they could be quite high in fat, salt and sugar. They don't take very long to prepare. They're very mm. convenient. So that's really what we're looking out for. With Rob, it seems like if it's got a label on it, it's bad. Not always. <laughs> so if it's got a health claim, it could, it's generally probably going to be ultra-processed. But then there's a benefit in this. So this whole conversation of not all ultra-processed foods should really be bundled into that one classification. You know, a, a Weetabix is essentially an ultra-processed food because it's got things added to it. Um, mm vitamins and minerals, but it's really good for you. It's, it's got a lot of fibre, it's got a lot of other nutrients. So I think there probably needs to be more... particularly bad, like you were just saying, this, I mean, I would say look at shreddies and go, well, it's kind of a, it's brown in the morning. Yeah, they're, they're not that bad for you. They contain more sugar. I think really the, the best example would be to have maybe a more sugared variety. Yeah, um, of the cereal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these two, you know, they're not too bad. OK. They're not too bad. But they're both 3.50 each, aren't they? So let's yeah. move on to cereal bars. Okay. Give us your comparison there. Right, so chocolate cereal bars. Chocolate's made its way into a lot of health bars, um, especially this cereal bars. I know, I was bars. under the moon when that happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is it? I was so happy. I was uh, like, what, can I have chocolate as well? And as cereal. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, again, it, it's what goes into this. So we've got a lot of emulsifiers, we've got the chocolate itself. Um, you know, this breaks down quite easily into a sort of, you know, a very soft, sugary... Yeah, very nice. Very nice, right? <laughs> yeah, not great for you. So when, it, when you digest it, it's very easy to want more of these foods. You could easily eat a couple of these in one sitting. Then I think what to look out for is maybe something that's a lot more natural. 
So I've got these fruit and nut bars here. They're just made of pressed nuts, uh, pressed fruits. They've got more fiber, so they're digested more slowly. Um, you know, they've probably got more nutrients in them, nutrient-wise, than these have. You've got nutrients in the fruit, the nuts, that kind of thing. So I would say that was a better option. You still want to limit it. It's still a, effectively a snack that you have that's just fairly high in sugar, albeit natural sugars. But for me, that's the but better option. But there's a swap out there. A bit sweet. What about crisps? What does emulsifier bring the way? So that's how you get water to combine with fat. So okay. they use it a lot to give you that mouthfeel. Yeah. And again, that's another thing that's quite addictive about these foods. You know, they have that deliciousness taste to them yeah. that makes you want to yeah. eat more of that mouthful. Sorry, I was, so, just, I was just into it. We've got right, a lot to get crisps. through. Crisps. Science lesson. Right, OK, so crisps, the Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. You couldn't get further away from potato <laughs> as well. So these are, yeah, they're, they're designed it on the to... <laughs> it Once you pop, you can't stop. Mm -hmm. They're designed to fit into your mouth. They're very flavoursome. They melt, you know, they're, they're very moorish. It's easy not to stop. Oh, God, open them up. I can't handle it. <laughs> probably better to go for a ready salted plain crisp. Close to potato. Nice and they're cheaper than Pringles, like the six bags there, one pound, just potatoes, vegetables yeah. and salt. Yeah. OK. What next... about ready meals? Yeah. yeah, funny one, ready meals. Again, it's about looking on the packet. Lots of ingredients. Sometimes the ingredients are just spices that are used in the food, but sometimes, again, it's these emulsifiers, these other additives. You know, they're very soft, they're very easy to eat, they don't take long to prepare. Not a lot of fibre, not a lot of other nutrients. So I would probably go for something that's got more vegetables in, vegetable-based. Nice really natural. If you look at the back of the packet, it's all whole ingredients. You can check the food labelling on the front, mostly oranges and green. Great. And it's cheaper than that one. It's 30 cheaper. seconds okay, to get through. Perfect. Give, give us a little lowdown of water and bread. Yeah, quick one with... Um, so, the fizzy drinks, obviously not great for you. Mm. We know that. There's a lot of options now on the market. I probably wouldn't go for a diet one because I don't like artificial sweeteners. But a lot of these now are just water that's infused with herbs. So I think they're quite a nice option. And Lastly, bread. Bread, the most contentious one. So I would... White sliced, uh, full of all sorts of ingredients. But if that's all you can afford, that's within your budget, then so be it. Maybe focus on another part of your diet to reduce your UPF. If you can afford it, fresh loaf, wholemeal, more fibre. <laughs> Rob, we've run out of time. There you go, perfect. <laughs>